Welcome back to part two. As you recall from part one, this line here in the solver, oops, is just a placeholder. Uh, we need to derive just a little bit of physics to work out what the force due to buoyancy is on one of these points. So let's do that. Nothing too scary. Force equals mass times acceleration. Therefore, uh, acceleration equals force over mass. Okay, so above the water, um, acceleration uh, the force is g times density times the volume and the mass is density times the volume so uh, the g uh, sorry the density cancels out and the volume cancels out so a equals g which is what we had for the first one and that worked fine uh, but for now we will just cancel out the volume and go with g times density over density and then below the water, we've got acceleration equals G times density over density. But there's a pushback from the water because you've displaced a lump of the water. So the water density is one. So the pushback is G times one over density. Okay, so then uh, if we put this bit in brackets and take out the G outside, we get to G times density minus one over density and that's the number we're going to use right so let's drop that value in so this is it um, g times denseness minus one over denseness in the y component uh, now that's not going to make a huge difference at the moment It'll only come into its own when we start getting multiple densities across the same object. Good, that's that done. So next thing to deal with is viscosity. So here we are, physics off the internet. Um, and to be honest, this is the only bit that I'm interested in. It says that the force is, and therefore the acceleration, is proportional to the velocity squared. This is squared. So let's code that in. We'll call this at axelvisc so we can split that off separately. We need to split the velocity vector up into its length and its normalized vector. Then square the length because that's just a number and multiply that by the normalized vector uh, and then minus it because it's going in the opposite direction to the velocity. It resists the velocity motion. So uh, equals length v. So that's squared. So we can use the power command. Pow that comma two. And then times the normalized times a scale factor which we will call one at the moment and then that is subtracted from Excel because it's going in a different direction at Excel minus equals at Excel disk no vex errors and hit play okay that's not working and the reason it's not working is because I have created an attribute called Axel Visc and it assumes that it's a scalar. So if I do that, then it works. So if I come out of the solver, you can see bad we can play around with the scale 
scale factor a little bit. Let's try 0.1. That also looks okay. I'd say not as good. Um, just out of interest, let's try a 10. Oh, no. Okay, so I'm going to go with 0.5 for the moment. And also, let's try dropping the the pig's head from a higher height. Let's put a 10 in there. Well, that's pretty good. Okay. Uh, that's viscosity dealt with. Now we need to deal with currents in the water. So what we got here, we've got surface, back on the ocean evaluate, we've got surface, FDF, height field, don't want that, velocity. That's what we want. That's enabled. So now we've got velocity x, velocity y, velocity z. So ideally we need, it's going to save us a lot of hassle if we can combine those into one attribute with three components. So let's do that. BDB vect, vector from scalar. So that should do it. Well, no, it won't do it. I'll tell you that now. It's the same. Uh, because we need to convert it to a VDB first, so it's not a VDB at the moment. If we look at that, see that's kind of blue, and you've got that icon, and then we convert it to a VDB, and it's still blue. See, it's different blue now. Is it? Oh no, it's still the same. Still the same blue, but it's got a different icon. Oh. And now that should work. Yeah, see now we've got velocity is vector 3s, so that's all right, good. Go back in here. We need another attribute from volume. This one is, I'm going to call it V current. Attribute size is 3, and the volume is VEL. So let's see if we can visualize that. Well, got something. Uh, now we're dealing with uh, the, we've dealt with the buoyancy in the up and down, so we want to ignore the Y component of the V current. So it just moves it side to side. So this is not a simulation. This is to look good and to be convenient and to be useful. And this is pretty easy to code in, I think, um, because we current there. Um, 
if you think about it, um, we need well, we need a scale factor to start with. So let's put that. Um, V at V current star equals one. That's our scale factor for now. Uh, now, uh, if we think about it, if the velocity of the current and the velocity of the object are the same, it's not going to do anything. It's not going to accelerate or decelerate the object. It will just move with the current. Um, and if the velocity of the current and the velocity of the point is different the relative motion of them is one minus the other so all we've got to do I think is substitute into here instead of v, v at v it's v at v minus the current and same there minus v current I think that should do it. Uh, before, I, let's just make that scale factor 100 just to make sure we've got something. We're definitely going to see something if it's worked. There you see, it didn't work anyway because I didn't put the um, at signs in. Oh, yeah, just one more thing. interested in the current up and down. Let's see what we get. That's good. Goes down, hits the water, goes crazy. So we can put that back to something a little more sane. Well, let's just, let's just go for one, see what happens. Looks promising. I think a bit more, a bit more V. Let's go for four of those. That's pretty good. Here's a couple of random objects with the same settings. Uh, that's it for part two. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it or used it, please leave a like and subscribe. Project files are on Patreon with an extra bonus section of how to make this work with an object with varying density. So you can have a heavy bit at the bottom and a light bit at the top uh, and it will still float correctly. Thanks very much. Bye for now.